Good evening. Welcome to the telecast. My name is Kathy Ellis, and the name of this ministry is God's Power Surge, GPS for short, because I believe everyone needs direction in where they're going, and Jesus Christ is the only direction. This evening, we're going to talk about truth, because it seems nowadays you hear a whole lot about truth, but it's everyone has their own truth. Well, I'm here to tell you this evening, we're going to go over some scriptures, there's only one truth. And, uh, you know, we need to get that ingrained within us. You know, uh, a lot of people say, well, this is my truth, and that can be your truth. Nope, there's only one truth. So uh, I've got some songs I want to sing you're hearing. It's good to be back. It seems like it's been forever. <laughs> I guess it was just last year, Rodney told me. <laughs> but I'm glad to be back, and I hope that you're blessed this evening with what the Lord's given me to share with you. And this song's called The Truth. I don't sing it a whole lot. It's new to me. And um, so uh, here we go. What is the truth? Is it what you feel? Is it what you hear? Is it what you say? What is the truth? Is it what you is it what you read? Is it what you sow? For the truth is Jesus and His holy word, the example He lived and the love He shows. The truth. Surely is coming back soon. Jesus was talked bad about by religious leaders, was scoffed by people who didn't know the word. So it doesn't matter what walk of life the adversary will use. Those closest to you What is the truth? Is it the way you feel? Is it what you hear? Is it what you say? What is the truth? Is it what you know? Is it what you is it what you sow? For the truth is Jesus and his holy word. The example he lived and the love he shows. For the truth is Jesus and the redemption he gives. And he will have The disciples were beaten and thrown in jail for giving the truth to a wicked world. So do you think things would be any different for you and me when the world first hated Jesus, the one who came to the truth is it the way you feel is it what you hear is it what you say what is the truth is it what you know is it what you read is it what you sow for the truth Well, that's 
talk bad about you give it to God when people hurt you give it to God when people hate you give it to God when people take from you give it to God for it all belongs Is it the way you feel? Is it what you hear? Is it what you say? What is the truth? Is it what you know? Is it what you read? Is it what you sow? For the truth is It's the first song, first time I ever sung that song in its entirety. And of course, it's always a work in progress when you're learning new songs. And I wrote that in 2020, but I just don't sing it enough <laughs> to know the words to it and to even remember the tune a lot of times. But you know, when God gives me these songs, I'm just so surprised when Scripture lines right up to it. But God, when He speaks, it's scriptural. And if you hear a voice and it's not scriptural and it's not the truth and it's not loving kindness, then you know where that voice is coming from and you just need to not entertain it but just send it packing. <laughs> I tell you, God is good. And you know the word says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I have not played this on the guitar. <laughs> Uh, I usually would sing this uh, when I'm playing with my brother uh, and play bass. <laughs> so uh, there's always a first. And this is it. And it's called, uh, this song's called Jesus is the Way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. He came down to earth to show us.
our faith at every hand. But when we lift our hands and voice up to God, He comes and melts our cares all away. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He came down to earth to show us the way He had to die so we could live. So when we pray, let us give it all to Him. So when we pray, let us give it all to So when we pray, let us give it all to him. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He said no one can come into the Father but by him. So let us go to the word. All right, we're talking about the truth this evening, and I've got several scriptures uh, listed here, but I also like to look up words. Uh, There's nothing like getting a dictionary out and seeing uh, what exactly truth means in the dictionary. And according to Merriam-Webster... (laughs) <laughs> the truth is the body of real things, events, and facts, actuality, okay? The state of being the case, fact. Um, and uh, there's another one, the property as of a statement of being in accord with a fact or reality. Uh, sincerity in action, character, and utterance. Uh, and they have um, uh, being constant there. And also, they have the word God in here. Um, because nothing tells you more truth than God and the word of God, as we're going to read about in these scriptures. So if you have a pen and paper, you can write down these scriptures. And you have them. Uh, and we're going to discuss truth this evening. And what the Bible says about truth. And of course, John 14, 6, John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And just like that song I just sung, Jesus is the way. And, um, you know, we, we come to the altar, we pray, and we give our cares to him because he cares for us. And um, then John 8, 32, John 8, 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. And the truth is Jesus. And if you know Jesus, Jesus will make you free. And people's like, well, how is that possible? How do you feel free? Well, you, you get born again, and you know exactly what feeling free means. Because when you uh, say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life and make me a new creature. I can't live this way anymore. And you learn that truth. It's like the aha of ahas, the epiphanies, as they call it. (laughs) And boy, let me tell you, you feel like you could just float on up to heaven and you have that feeling within you that you know that you know that you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, my friend, is the truth that shall make you free. Now, John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit that come. Uh, Jesus said, I must go, and I send a comforter. And that's the third of the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call him, it's the same thing. That is a person. That is the third of the Godhead. And when he comes, he witnesses the truth because he's God. And he leads you and guides you in truth. 
The word says he will lead you and guide you in all truth and righteousness. The spirit of truth has come and he will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, Jesus was the word that come and dwelt among men. He was the word that became flesh and dwelt among men. Jesus is the word. And it says here, thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You're seeing how this is all encompassing. And the spirit of truth, the third of the Godhead, the spirit we have within us. Hallelujah. Psalms 145, 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Now, God knows your heart. He doesn't sleep or slumber. He can be everywhere at one time. And that's hard for us to understand because we are defined by matter and space, and we take up space. And it's hard for us to think about something being everywhere all at once. But see, God isn't like us. And that's something that we have to really realize. God is not like us. Now, Jesus came and was man, his son. But God, the Father, and God, the Holy Spirit, is not like us. <laughs> okay? He can be everywhere at one time. And he knows exactly what you're doing if you're doing wrong. So don't think you're hiding it from anybody. You might be hiding it from people, but God sees everything. He's got the all-seeing eye. So don't be foolish, people. <laughs> don't do anything that you wouldn't do right in front of Jesus if he was standing right before you, and you'll be fine. <laughs> because let me tell you, he is standing right before you. You just don't know it. <laughs> Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. And I want to be a delight to God. You know, I don't want to be a murmurer or a complainer or a scoffer, or, and I don't want to be a backbiter because that's something God hates. And I don't want to be a gossiper. I don't like to hear gossip. I don't want anything to do with that kind of stuff. Just stay away from it. Because I want to be a delight to God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 6 says this. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. And they talk about charity also being love. And it says perfect love casts out all fear. Hallelujah. And uh, love, um, I can't, and it left me at quick, covers a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. So, love and truth, hallelujah. You know, charity doesn't puff itself up. It doesn't behave unseemingly. doesn't provoke or think evil. doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Ephesians 6.14. Seems like I can't get away from these scriptures in Ephesians because we're talking about the armor of God here. So stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> now we're going to delve into that a little bit more next week. But, you know, the truth is uh, around your waist, is the belt. And, um, you know, and I think it, it may symbolize that you have to have the truth all around you. You know, and that truth protects, you know. Um, so we have to really think about, <laughs> you know, the armor of God, you know, and all those things. But let me 
refrain from that until next week. <laughs> we'll talk about that more. But the truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 2 Timothy 2.15 It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. We study the word of God. And we really delve into it. You know, and we learn it. And um, I, I heard today a, a preacher say that we really need to start memorizing Bible verses. And get that within us. Because what did Jesus do? Jesus used the word against the enemy to make the enemy flee. And we'll be talking more about that next week, too. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. So we, it's all encompassing, folks. You know, we need to know the Word of God. It's very important that you get your Bibles out and read it and learn these Bible verses. Because the Word of God is the truth. As we heard in John seventeen seventeen, Sanctify them through thy truth. And sanctify means to separate them. The children of God have to be separate from the world. And we are separated through the truth. And the truth is the word of God. The word of God is going to separate you from the word. You're going to know the truth and the truth will make you free. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We have to know this. And the Bible is full of all sorts of wonderful truths. That he will never leave us or forsake us. That he loves us. He loves us so much, he sent his son for us. And that if we seek, the, uh, seek him, if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything we have need of will be added unto us. You know, and, and, and um, you know, his word also says that, you know, that we can't even think and comprehend the things that he has for us. You know, and, and those things are awesome truths. To encourage us. Yes, this walk may not always be easy. People may rise up against us. But we have to remember that it's not the people. But it's the spirit within them that's working. And we have to know that Jesus who is in us, he that is in us is greater than the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. <laughs> We have to remember these truths, and that's what encourages us. The Bible will encourage you, and that's why we have to know the Word of God, and the Word of God will help us fight our battles and endure. Remember we talked about endurance. We have to be endurant, be able to endure until the end so we can be saved. Hallelujah. We need to really encourage ourselves this evening with the Word of God to know the truth, because there is only one truth. It's just like the world to talk about, oh, this is my truth, and that's their truth, and this is the truth. And, and I was laughing, listening to a preacher saying, here truth, there truth, and everywhere a truth, truth, you know. <laughs> but that's the way the world works. And the devil will, knows the word of God, and he twists it and manipulates it and gets it in people's heads to believe this foolishness. That's why you have to have the word of God in you so you won't be deceived. That's why it says, show yourself approved. I mean, so you won't be deceived. There's a lot of deception going on in the world today. We really need to know the word of God. We really do. John 4.24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship. And those that, that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. We really need to dig down deep when we're worshiping God. And not just give him lip service, because that's not truth. The truth comes from our innermost, our spirit man. And we need to worship him through our spirit man in the truth of who he is. And he doesn't have to do another thing for us because on the cross he said it was finished. But he does all these wonderful things to help us because he loves us. And he sent that comforter. 
you know, and it's just so many things, you know, things that I've thought about, and then, wow, there they are. You know, um, we was in Africa, and I was wanting to eat fresh pineapple so bad. And uh, we were leaving a church service, and we were going to, back to the place where we were staying to eat lunch, and I was thinking, man, I'd just love to have some fresh pineapple. I've always wanted to eat fresh pineapple, you know, and there it's truly fresh. And oh, <laughs> imagine my surprise when they brought out that pineapple. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you know, God loves us. It says he'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, so don't be surprised when those things come about. God loves us. Hallelujah. John 18, John 18, and we're going to be in verses 37 and 38. John 18, 37 and 38 says, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I'm a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause I come, come I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, heareth my voice. And Pilate said unto him, What is the truth? What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find no fault at all. I find in him no fault at all. Now see, this is when Jesus was about to be crucified. And Jesus said, I come to... To show the world the truth. And those that know the truth hear my voice. So when we hear the word of God, we know that we are the children of the truth. We know the truth. Hallelujah. We really need to know Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So we can hear his voice and be led by the spirit. Be led by the truth. Because it said... Appear, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. All truth. And that is God's word, God's truth, God's son, God's spirit. Hallelujah. And then we've got 1 John 3.18. It says, My children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And then I wondered, what does that actually mean? And I wanted to get a better meaning. And I found this when I read the commentary, and it says, One may love in word only, and yet the affectionate words may be quite sincere. And this is a common case. People say kind things, which they mean at the moment, but afterwards they do not take the trouble to act kindly. But to love with the tongue is only, tongue is far worse. This is to say kind things which one doesn't mean and which one knows to be unreal. Deeds are needed to complete the kind word. Truth is needed to correct the insincere tongue. Wow. So we have to really be sincere, not give lip service, because God knows. God knows your heart. He knows you better than you know yourself. That's why it's important to have him lead us and guide us in all truth and righteousness. Now let us pray. Lord God, after we've read all these uh, verses, we've read your word, Lord God, concerning the truth. And Lord God, we know that your word doesn't return unto you void, but does everything that you want it to do. Lord God, let us ponder upon the word as Mary did. Ponder it and keep it in our hearts, Lord God, and, and remember it. Because we need to know the truth, and we need to know that you are the only truth. Now, Lord, we're asking this evening if there's any sick. Lord God, we're asking for your spirit to go forth. And make them well. If there's anyone needing salvation, Lord God, let them fall down before you and confess 
unto you. And Lord, make them a new creature. If there's anyone that needs delivered, Lord God, you are still delivering and making miracles all over. Lord God, do what only you can do. And Lord God, we'll not forget to give you all the alms and glory and praise for it all. In Jesus' name we ask. And I am out of time. But until next week, I hope that you are blessed.